Today we're going to install the latest version of the Oracle database on a Windows computer. We'll use Oracle 23, and this is different because it uses a Docker container, rather than a Windows installation package that you're probably used to. Don't worry, I'll show you all of the steps I follow from downloading the software all the way to connecting to the database in an SQL editor and running the query. Start by going to the Oracle database get started page here. I've got a link in the description for this. Now it says Oracle Database Free here. Oracle Free is the new name for Oracle Express, which is a free version of the database that you can use. If we scroll down this page, we can see a few installation options. We see a Docker or Podman option. We see a VM VirtualBox option and a bunch of others such as Linux and Oracle Client. Down the bottom, we see a Windows section, which says we should use either the Docker container or the VM. In this video, we'll use the Docker container. It's fairly easy to set up, so let's get started. Step one is to download and install Docker. Go to the Docker website at docker.com. Go to products in the menu, then select Docker desktop. Click on the download button for the Windows operating system, which may be the default here. You'll see a save window. Save this file to your computer. It's about 470 megabytes, so it may take a few minutes to download. Once the file is downloaded, open it. We will simply need to follow the steps. The first screen asks if you want to add a desktop shortcut. I'll leave this checked, but it's up to you. Click OK. The installer will then start unpacking the files. For me, this step took a few minutes. Once it is finished, you may see a window asking you to restart Windows, so save your work and restart your computer. Once you have restarted, you may see this prompt for subscribing to Docker. If not, you may need to run Docker by clicking Start and then typing Docker. Click on Docker Desktop and it will open to this screen. On this screen, it describes what the requirements are for the free version and for the subscription. I don't fit the criteria for a subscription, so I'll click Accept. Docker Desktop will now be started. You'll be asked to sign in. You can sign in if you have an account already or create an account, but for this demo, we can continue without signing in. You'll then be asked about your role. You can click Skip Survey. You'll then see the main screen of Docker. It might say Docker Engine Stopped. I waited a minute or so and then it changed to starting the Docker Engine. Soon after that it started and the screen looked like this. If your Docker app stays on Docker Engine Stopped for a while, I would do a quick Google search as there are a few posts on how to solve this. The second step is to download the Oracle database so we can use it with Docker. To do this, open the command prompt by clicking Start, typing Command and then selecting Command Prompt. This command prompt will open. Now we run a Docker command called Docker Pull. This will essentially download a specific image to our computer. We want to download the Oracle database image, which allows us to create a database. To do this, we run this docker pull command here. I'll add this command to the video description, so you can copy and paste it rather than typing it in. We specify docker pull, then the URL to the Oracle database. It downloads the image for the latest version of Oracle Free Database. Run this command and the database image is downloaded. It can take a few minutes to download. Once the image is downloaded, step 3 is to run a new container from this image, which means we run a process that starts the Oracle database. We can see our downloaded images by running this docker images command. This is the image we have just downloaded. Next, we run another docker command to create the container and start the database. This is the docker run command. I've also added this command to the description, so you can just copy and paste it. There's a lot in this command, so let's look at each part. We start with docker run. The dash D means it runs in detached mode, which means we can access this command prompt when the container is running. The dash dash name allows us to specify a name for our new container, which we have then specified as Oracle 23. You can change this if you like, but Oracle 23 is simple and easy. Notice that the name parameter has two dashes. Make sure it has two when you run the command, otherwise you'll have issues. Next is the dash P, which specifies the port number. The port number is 1521, and it's mentioned twice because one is opening the port from within the container, 
and the other is connecting from outside the container. It's easier if this is the same port. I've read that the default port is 1521, so you can admit it, but I tried that and had errors connecting, so I think it's better to specify this port parameter. Next we have the dash E parameter, which allows us to specify a range of environment variables or other parameters specific to the Oracle database. The next parameters include the Oracle PWD, which is the password you will set for the sys and system accounts. You can change this if you like, but just remember it, as you'll need it to connect to the database. Finally, we have the name of the image here, which is the URL we used in the docker pull command. Run this command. It will show a string of characters in the terminal, which is the ID of the container. The container is now starting up. We can check the status by running the docker ps command. We can see a list of containers here. In the status column we can see how long the container has been running for, as well as the status. It currently says starting. When it's ready it should change to healthy, which for me took about 5-6 to six minutes. You can keep running the docker ps command to get an update. Once the status says healthy we can connect to the database. Open your favourite SQL editor. I'll be using the SQL developer extension for VS Code, which is Oracle's new tool for connecting to a database. You can use SQL Developer or another tool if you prefer. If you want to know how to set up this extension and some of the features, check out my video here. Click on the button here to create a new connection. Next, enter the details to connect. For the connection name, enter the name you want for the connection. I'll enter Oracle 23 CDB, so I know what version and that it's the container database. For the role, select sysdba. For the username, select sys. For the password, enter the password you provided in the docker run command earlier. I used the value of my password 1, so I'll enter that. Check save password if you want this to be saved, and not have to enter it each time you connect. For hostname, enter localhost. For the port, enter 1521. Leave the type as service name. For the service name, enter free. This is the container database. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of container and pluggable databases, check out my video here. Now, before we test the connection, make sure that any existing Oracle installations on your computer are stopped. If you have a previous version on your computer, like I did, it may be already using port 1521 which can conflict with this new installation. You can either uninstall that old database or go to services and stop the Oracle services. Let's test the connection. Click test. Hopefully it will say the connection is successful. If so, click on create connection and the connection will be saved. If you get an error message, there are a range of ways to solve it depending on the error. I've got a few posts I've written on this, which I'll link to in the description. So take a look there to see if that will help, and read through the comments on this video as other people may have a similar error and have a solution there. Assuming the connection is ok, right click on the connection name and click connect. Once it is connected, right click on the connection and select open new SQL file. You'll see a new tab here. I can run a simple select sysdate query and see the current date here on the database, which shows it has worked. We now have the Oracle database set up on our computer. If you want to connect to the pluggable database, the steps are pretty similar. Create a new connection using the button on the left panel. Enter a name for the connection such as Oracle 23 PDB. The rest of the connection details are all the same except for the service name. Enter the name of the PDB which is free PDB1. Then test the connection, it should be successful. You can now save the connection and work with the pluggable database. Now that you have the Oracle database running in Docker, you should watch this video on bind amounts to learn how to ensure the database data is saved between sessions. Thanks for watching.